Hello everybody, and welcome back to Let's Play King's Quest 3. Last time we were introduced to our protagonist, Gwydion, who's been trapped by the evil wizard Mananan and pressed into service since he was just a baby. He knows nothing else, but he has decided that the time has come to get out of here. But how are we going to do that? Well, Mananan's going on a journey, and he will be back, as the clock up there says, at around 30 minutes. So we need to do a whole bunch of stuff before he gets back. But if he does get back before we're completely done, it's fine. Do not worry your pretty little head about it. Because there's still more stuff we can do. Anyway, yeah, I have it paused right now. Just if you just type a letter and press enter, it will like pause the clock if you need it. So you can figure things out. But anyway, I think I figured it uh, out about the cat because I tried it off screen. And for some reason, you can pick the cat up when it's downstairs. If we can get it. And hurry up and get that darn cat. Just kind of... Oh, come on. Don't do this to me, kitty. Oh, that's right there. Ah. It's the kitty. Oh, it's still there. All right. I don't know if I could pick it up in here. I, I could pick it up in the other room when I tested it out. Get cat. For the love of... Ugh. Hold on. I will load when I have the cat in my grasp. Finally got you, you stupid little pussy. Oh, now you grab the nasty cat by the scruff of its neck, avoiding its needle sharp claws. Now that you have it, what are you going to do with it? Get fur. Do it quickly. Screech. <laughs> you manage to pluck some fur before it viciously scratches and leaps from your arms. With grim satisfaction, you survey your wounds. Stupid cat, you scoff. Whether you, whether you know it or not, you just helped me. The detestable cat leaps from your arms, snarling and screeching. By the way, I do not recommend grabbing your cat and tearing fur from it. That's uh, not an... Oh, you're blocking me from this thing, you stupid little... <laughs> but yeah, don't, uh... Don't tear fur from your cat. That's not nice. Anyway, that brass key we got... Let's take a look around here. We haven't actually been here yet. Man is very private with his study and doesn't like you poking around. The huge oak desk is covered with his writing implements. and no cabinet is in the corner. There's a chart in the rear wall. The bookshelves are filled with books on every subject. The wizard fancies himself to be quite a scholar. Hey, I have a ton of books, too. I love them. Look. Cabinet. Your cabinet has a brass handle on its door. Your feather duster is lying on its top. So, uh, if one of the chores Manan gave you was to uh, clean his study, then you have to use this duster to clean it. But let's not worry about that, because he gave us no such chore. Open cabinet. Oh, come on. There we go. You unlock the oaken cabinet using the brass key that we got that was on top of that closet. Look, oh, inside you find the wizard's magic wand. You take it with you knowing it could mean death if he finds it missing. Yeah, be careful with that thing. To close in the door, you carefully relock it. So let's take some more look around, if that sentence makes any sense. Look, shelf. So many books on the bookshelf. You wonder what Manana has time to read them. When Manana has time to read them all, titles cover many subjects from the ancient Arabic mythology to a study of the heavens to the philosophies of Socrates. That's pretty cool. Hmm. Okay, there's something I am looking for. If you examine the bookshelf, you notice a glint of metal behind one huge volume. Pull. Book. You push the large book aside, revealing a metal lever attached to the back of the bookshelf. All right. Oh. Pushed enter too soon. Sorry, a minute. You're... 
always in a hurry in this game. Usually I don't like games that like have you on a constant time limit, but this game is a big exception. A trapdoor opens, revealing the steep stone stairs leading into darkness. More stairs, yay. By the way, if the cat's here, don't go downstairs. That uh, cat wants to kill you. And here we are in a secret lab. You look in all around this torch lit underground room. It appears to be a laboratory, a wizard's laboratory. Against the earthen walls, there are rows of shelves holding numerous jars which contain strange unknown ingredients. The shelves also hold skeletons of small animals and birds, some human skulls and bones, and other odd instruments, whose use you do not know. Against the earth wall is a massive oak table with a spacious workshop. The narrow stone steps lead up to the wizard's study. So yeah, this place is very important. We will do, be doing much here. We're going to be doing something here now, actually. Shelves. You curiously gaze at these strange jars of ingredients, the animal and human bones and other item elements which line the rows of shelves. You see jars of ingredients resting on labeled shelves. Shelves. Gee, how many times can I say shelves? <laughs> shelves bearing such ghastly names as powdered fish bone, nightshade juice, mandrake root powder, saffron, toadstool, and toadstool powder. Now we are going to need every single one of those. So take mandrake. Alright. Take root powder. Or not. Oh, but it was mandrake root powder. That's I think. Nightshade. What? Take juice. There we go. You've removed the job. Nightshade juice. All right. Take fish bones. There we go. Take saffron. Take. Sp All right. And take. Stool powder. And there we go. So we are going to need all this stuff. We're not going to use all of it right now. But we'll be using it here. Now before you look at this book, make sure to save. This is an important place to save. Let's take a look at this book. Covered with gold trimmings, the old book's leather cover is cracked and worn. Its page is yellowed and brittle. The tile, however, is clear. The sorcery of old. We really thumb through the pa through page after page of what you assume to be magic formulas. Think the old handwriting is faint and barely readable. Most of the formulas are indecipherable, but a few are in the language you know. You treat the old book with great care, as you can tell it contains recipes for some very old and powerful magic spells. Your hands shake as you realize this book could be the key to your escape from the evil Mananan. All right. Uh, use book. Um, open book. Not being an experienced sorcerer, most spells in this book are too complicated for you to understand. Cast spell. Um, one second. Okay, I remember now. Sorry, I'm used to the VGA version. I have played this version several times before, but. I completely forgot that this part actually has copyright protection. The uh, pages of the spellbook are actually in the game manual, and you need them to follow the instructions to cast the spell. So, what you need to do, turn to page. With trembling hands, you turn the pages of the old source of the sorcery of old and prepare to follow the instructions precisely. There we go. I actually have the instruction manual right here. If I can uh, zoom in on it, I cannot zoom in on it. And it's very small. Great. Wait, let me get my. I actually have to whip out my glasses for this. There we go. Okay, so you know you must work with the utmost care. Every step is critical. Each must be done in the proper way, in the proper sequence. You tremble in anticipation. I'm not even 
Not even a far sighted, but I still need the glasses to read this. Okay. So you have to follow the instructions exactly, and all this music is just so creepy. Okay, so um, this is going to be flying like an eagle or a fly. Alright. Put. Actually, you know what? Let's, let's see what happens if I do something wrong. So if you type in anything wrong, pretty much anything at all, you have done it wrong. You need to follow the instructions exactly to the letter in a row. The only way to get past it is if you like spell something wrong, then it'll just be like, what's that? And nothing bad will happen. A strange feeling comes over you. You wonder if you could have made a mistake. And our head turns into a fly head. Yeah, some funny things happen if you get these wrong. Oh, gritty, what big eyes you have. <laughs> so let's do that right. Oh, that's our first death, isn't it? Okay, so let's do this right this time. Put a pinch of saffron in essence. Oh, see, there we go. Yeah, that's what it says. Hmm. Put pinch of saffron in essence. You carefully sprinkle the precious saffron into the vial of rose petal essence. There we go. Oh, now I need to type in the verse. And luckily it pauses for this. Let me see if I can read. It's in, like, weird handwriting, too, so it's hard to... Oh, winged spirits, set me free. Ugh. Okay, I have it now. I actually looked up a version of the manual that is just plain text and not that weird faded handwriting that's there. Set me free. Of earthly bindings just like the Oh wait a minute. I need a comma there. Crap. Yeah, exactly. Exactly how it is. Bindings just like the In this essence behold the might. Grant the precious gift of flight. All right. Wave wand. You wave the magic wand over the vial of rose petal essence. Successfully, you completed the uh, successfully completing the spell. You again look at the wizard's laboratory. All right, did that correctly this time. So what that means is that we now have a bottled spell in our inventory. So uh, what the instructions in the manual say is now you can dip an eagle feather in the e essence if you want to become an eagle, or dip the fly's wing in the essence if you want to become a fly. You will turn into an eagle or a fly. If you do not, do not transform back into yourself, the spell will wear off after some time has passed. You can use the spell until your rose petal saffron potion is gone to, to return to your own form before the spell wears off. Recite this verse. You will be gone, myself return, or fly be gone, myself return. And you can use it three times, so save it for a good cause. Now let me just save and we can continue. Now let's get out of here and we can finally go and explore a bit of Ludor. Yeah, in the uh, VGA version of the game, there's no copyright protection like that, so you actually just open the book and you can turn the pages to the different spells, and it just says right there on the uh, game what you need to do. But nope, there's copyright protection on this. You need to buy the game so you can get the manual, and then you can um, do stuff. So that's pretty neat. So, uh, I have everything I need from here for now. So we're going to take a chance and go. Now, one more thing I want to do before I officially leave. 
um, bin coop. Um, open gate. There we go. Hit chicken. Again, this is going to be a tough thing. I know there's a button to... Oh, come on. Oh, come on. There we go. Gotcha. You managed to catch a chicken, but what are you going to do with it? Get that over there. Tucking the chicken firmly into one arm, you gently pluck a small feather, then let it go. Treat the chicken a lot better than they did the cat. That's because the cat's a jerk. Mrs. Norris and Harry Potter. Alright, here comes the hardest part of the game, in my opinion. The path downwards. In true Sierra fashion, this path is difficult because you can fall at any time. So, yeah. I'm going to go down, and I, heck, I'm going to fast forward it just so you won't have to sit through the whole thing, because it's going to be painful. So, here we go. Well, that actually wasn't so bad. All right. That's cool. And I believe if we head down here. We are now in Ludor. We are away from the wizard. And luckily, if we look at our map, the Magic Mask Faded Ink has brightened, but only in those places where you've been. Press F6 to teleport. Press F8 to put the map away. So you don't have to climb that path anymore. You can just teleport right back to where you want to go. So let's uh, press F8, get out of here, and uh... Oh, no, 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 no. We don't want these guys. We don't want these guys. These two are certainly in savory rogues. They look like they'd... They look like they'd rob you blind. No, no, ah! Oh. Seriously, dudes? After recovering from a whack on the head at the hands of the bandits, you stand unsteadily. Taking stock of your holdings, you discover that all of your possessions have been stolen. We do not want that, so let me restore. So I'm going to start on this screen instead, because that's the screen where they can rob you. Let's avoid them. And go this way instead. Ooh. Lock. Look. A beautiful stream ripples through these stately trees. Hmm, stately. Ah, this is where I want to be. Now, where am I? There I am. You have entered a quaint seaside town. Smoke curls lazily from the houses and shops overlooking the ocean. A pier stretches out into the bay. Near the pier, you notice a store and a tavern. So, oh, don't forget, you only have until 30 minutes before the wizard comes back, so you want to get back with plenty of time to, uh, put everything in order so that the wizard doesn't catch you. And there's also something else I should probably have showed you this earlier. Let's go into our inventory. Notice that there are items with little asterisks, asterisks near them. Nearly every item, in fact. Anything that can be used with magic has these. Remember in the uh, sort of prologue story in the manual, uh, Mananen was a was uh, punishing the guy because he had ingredients in his pockets that could be used for magic spells. He catches you with any of these, you are dead. So there's something you need to do once you get back before Mananen gets back, and I will show you that uh, when the time comes. 
Anyway, I'm going to save again here. Let's open door. Hello. Bottles of rum and wine sit atop the shelves behind the bar. A pretty barmaid stands there. She is large. The buxom barmaid has an air of hardened determination. You get the feeling that she doesn't take any guff from anybody. Talk, lady. Okay, talk, girl. She tosses her head and replies, Well, it be for you, sir. A good old pull of ale, or would you rather dram a rum? My auntie, you're the handsome one. <laughs> Give her a nice little cockney accent to go with the uh, text. But anyway, that's not what we wanted. What you want to do is uh, keep exiting and re-entering. Uh, these, are, these are the guys that actually robbed you. One of the surly looking characters yells to the barmaid, Wench, come over here with more ale. Uh, don't you love the bouncing animation? We're going to save again. Now let's look, men. The two ruffians of the table you see you looking at them and glare back at you menacingly. It's the bandits from the forest. How you know about them at this point, I don't know, because I didn't officially encounter them. One well, the ugly rogue scowls at you, and as he says, Bite it, kid. So what you want to do is that they were talking about something important, but with you there, they won't talk about it. So what you want to do, dip, fly wings in essence. Okay. And you turn into a fly. Now wait for a, a second. You overhear snatches of the two bandits' conversation. Squirm just like a pig. And that rope you rigged inside of the big oak tree works great. Now nobody all here f find our hide out. While well, even I'll bet even that wizard. <laughs> so they say something important about a uh, rope in a tree. Anyway, I only need to turn back and to look up what that spell was again. Bzzz. <laughs> Bzzz. Oh, this reminds me of a uh, chaos on Deponia. Anyway, um, fly be gone. Myself return. Oh, do I not fly? Bzzz. I gone. Self. The impulse to buzz around has vanished. You feel yourself growing bigger, so you head for what you hope is a safe place to land. Alright. Now that we have that information from them, I will end it off here. So what can we do with that information? Well, you're just going to have to find out next time on Let's Play King's Quest 3. Thank you for watching, and have a good day.